All right, everybody, welcome into, I mean, uh, we're just rolling our podcast daily at this point, but I would say another weekly edition, but at this point it's daily uh, of Cover One Buffalo. Nate Geary here this time, no AQ, no Aaron Quinn uh, today, but Eric, uh, Eric Turner's with me, of course, the founder of Cover One, joining me uh, after a long drive from Pittsburgh, New York, back up to the hometown, and uh, only about an hour drive for me, so just about a four-hour difference for us, bro. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was fun attending those first three days of camp, but, um, you know, I headed back to the North Country. It was a good five and a half hour drive or so. Mm. So I got home a few hours ago and uh, I, I definitely wanted to do this with you, man. I think it's a perfect, uh, perfect opportunity for us to take a look at some film of day three of training camp. Some film of, I think, maybe the most interesting day so far of camp. Now, I wasn't around um, for day one and day two. But I think today was maybe the most interesting for a couple of reasons without even practice starting. It's the first day of pads. Um, so it's kind of a better opportunity to evaluate, especially um, from a standpoint of you want to see what guys look like when they're when the pads are popping. Uh, but more importantly, when the quarterbacks are throwing with the pads on, um, it's a different feel. It's a totally different look. And everyone talks about how good Josh Allen looks in shorts. Well, uh, today he put the pads on and I, not only did he have the best day of all three quarterbacks, um, I thought that he took a step in a direction in this quarterback battle that the other guys simply haven't taken yet. Yeah, definitely. It was, uh, as you mentioned, it was awesome to have the pads on uh, today and, and to hear the popping. And uh, you saw the enthusiasm at practice uh, of them uh, during their inside drills when the linemen are going against the linemen, uh, when those receivers are going against the DBs and the one-on-ones out there. You saw the enthusiasm. You saw um, the, the character that – uh, you want to see on the first day that flair, that um, you know, that enthusiasm. So it was nice to see, uh, you know, those guys actually hit, hitting each other. Uh, and that's one thing I wasn't able to see the first couple of days because you can't really evaluate offense and def- defensive line and even linebackers for that most part uh, without having those pads on. So it was kind of it was nice to be out there and, and witness the first day of hitting. So I think it's interesting, and I want to bring this up before we really dive into our film study today, which is really the the culmination of a few days of training camp and a couple of plays that stood out to us. Um, I find it interesting that you look across the league and really the major news across the league from now until week one is going to be who gets injured. And I I have a wood table here. I'm knocking on it right now. But I don't know what the Bills are doing. But since Sean McDermott's come here and they changed around some of the training staff and they did some work, this team hasn't been getting injured in the conditioning portion. Like, like LA just the, the Chargers lost their starting corner in conditioning. Yeah. The Bills have remained healthy through three days. Calvin Benjamin left the field today, ended up coming back. But the fact that they've been able to stay healthy throughout the, at least the beginning part of training camp here and last year in training camp, they really went through training camp unscathed in terms of injuries. So whatever they're doing, it's working. I just wanted to bring that up because it, this is the time of year you're going to hear about the Achilles and the ACLs. It's just, it, it runs rampant through the league. And I don't know, maybe it's because the Bills practice on grass um, that they're able to sort of mitigate some of those high impacts or those cut injuries. Um, but whatever they're doing, it's working. And I just wanted to kind of bring that out because you look across the league and injuries are, are really sort of everywhere. Yeah, and, and that's a great point, and uh, I think the Bills also took proactive measures in the offseason, aside from the the lifting and, and strength and conditioning programs. Um, they 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 had to add depth, and, and they know that they got lucky last year, and, you know, I, I, I do think that, you know, something's going to come up, Nate. Some is, and they got to have guys in place to, um, or, you know, replace starters at one time or another this year. It's just going to happen, and, uh, and I think that the depth is being built. I don't think it's where they want it to be, uh, but I do think that on a daily basis, you're, you see them. They're still bringing guys in, and they're still moving people around. Uh, so uh, I, I don't think it's uh, – you're going to see that stuff every every other day, every week probably uh, from this team because they're not only looking to – you know, getting to look better, but they want to add guys uh, to their depth and and because things are going to come up. So two housekeeping matters before we get into what everyone's here for, and I'm glad that you're – you just lean back a little bit because oh. we've got two cover one hashtag man free shirts to give away during this podcast. The first question that you have to answer correctly, and you can do it right here in the chat. Um, whoever responds first in the chat to the, uh, the correct answer is going to win uh, a free cover one shirt, which is, which was actually very dope because I saw Eric today as I was walking through the tunnel, I was trying to get his attention, but you couldn't, you, you were, you weren't, <laughs> you were, you were, you were trying to escape out. 
yeah. uh, and get out of practice so you could get out of. Dodge. Oh, did you say Turner? Did you, did yeah, you I was like, I was yelling Turner, Turner. I kept yelling oh. Turner because I was like, that shirt is dope. I wanted to <laughs> yell at you, but so we're gonna give away two of these bad boys. Uh, I'm gonna come up with the first question. Eric's gonna come up with the second question a little bit later in the program. But uh, whoever puts in the the correct response of who Josh Allen completed that beautiful pass down the left sideline uh, to during practice today. Uh, is going to win a cover one T-shirt, and it's dope on the shirt. I don't know if you show them the sleeve, man, but you got the yeah, uh, the cover nice, one logo man. on the sleeve. That's what caught my eye first. So right there, and then you got the logo on the side right here, if you can see it. So uh, we want to know who did Josh Allen connect with on the left sideline uh, during practice today for a touchdown. Whoever answers it correct in the chat is going to win one of the T-shirts. And as I mentioned, we got another one to give away uh, before the end of this. And the and the second thing before we really get into the meat and potatoes here, of course, is don't forget. Go up to the Apple iTunes store. Go up to Google Plus. What I Google Spotify. We're Spotify, everywhere. Right, everywhere. YouTube. Go download and, and download the app. Um, because I'll tell you what. Right now, if you have the app, you knew 15 minutes beforehand. Uh, and Nick Letary uh, is our winner for the T-shirt. So Nick, uh, good call, man. You're gonna get a free Cover One T-shirt. So you'll be looking swagged up. So just make sure you um, you shoot. Uh, uh, yeah, shoot, me a, an, shoot me an shoot email me or a DM. Uh, my email is cover one eTurner at Yahoo. So if, if uh, you want to shoot me an email that way, uh, you can get your shirt, give me your address, or just DM me. Um, I'll make sure to uh, add you on Twitter or whatever social media that you're operating on. Put that right in on these uh, box there, Nick. So just shoot Eric an email and he'll get you hooked up. We appreciate it. So um, let's dive into it, Eric, because we've got sort of a, a bird's eye view of practice. Uh, that we're going to be sort of breaking down for y'all. And I think, uh, first and foremost, let's talk about, because this is going to lead right into this, this scheme is, I, I want to swear, because it is so <laughs> awesome. Like, and, and and maybe I'm overreacting because of what we were put through last year. I um, think, it's, I think that's a rational explanation right there, Nate, because I, I felt the same way with you, man. Uh, I was you know, obviously blown away the first couple of days, and on, I couldn't watch the defense because I was so enamored with Dude, the offense. Is that how you I felt? Said the, I said the same thing. So I was trying to tell Sal, I'm like, listen, you have to go watch defense because I couldn't – I, like, walked over to defense for, I don't know, Three minutes and I went right back over the offense. I watched the offense all day today. The empty sets is what they were really, really focusing on today. Uh, moving guys in from a five wide receiver set, as you can see, DeMarco and LaShawn McCoy both in the field here with the ones. So, at, of course, you know, DeMarco is going to move in the backfield. And what I like too is having DeMarco as your blocker and having LaShawn McCoy um, flanked out wide. So, let's get into this uh, film study, Eric. Okay. So, I wanted to start off with just kind of, you know, touching upon the Dable offense because it's something yes that I've spent a ton of time this offseason talking about we all have and we're trying to break it down this whole offseason but to actually see it was really exciting as Nate had mentioned and I mean just like this you know Nate had said you know they worked a lot in the empty set uh, today and this is a play with Josh Allen a quarterback and you had mentioned DeMarco and Shady Wide I mean if you look at these two and this is base this is a base offense Nate mm -hmm. you got DeMarco you have Charles Clay and then you're going to have Shady down here to the bottom It's the, 21 the personnel. Screen. It's base 21. Yeah. I mean think about that. That's that's Dable in a nutshell. You know, he's going to he's going to give you uh, a base matchup or a base personnel or, or any type of personnel, but he's going to give you a different look with that personnel. Normally, you know, any other year, Nate, what what are you going to probably see with the 21 personnel out of this? What type of formation? I, I formation, I, yeah. uh, offset eye, uh, things like that. But here's what I want you to do. Like, if you could go back like half a second, what I want to look at right now, if you stop right there, who is the last defender to the left of the screen? It's Lorenzo Alexander. So, yes. That is sort of the exact epitome of why you do what Brian Dable's doing in this pre-snap formation. Yep. You have moved the probably the one mismatch in the pass game all the way out to the numbers. Like that is that is working mismatches across the field. That's why this may look silly or gimmicky to people, but right there is the perfect example. Without even starting into the film, you see the benefit of moving out your least athletic linebacker out on your running back on LaShawn McCoy out at the numbers. You nailed it because if you're in 21 personnel, guess what? You're going to have base defense right here. You got three linebackers on the field. So that right there is dictating matchups. And again, you're putting a guy like that, like Zoe, he's, uh, he's not the most adept player in space. Can he do it? Yes, but you don't want him 
in, in coverage more times than not. So you'll see the movement. And this is one thing Nate had mentioned. You see the movement by uh, LaShawn McCoy coming into the backfield. And, Nate, what does that do when you bring a running back? Is sim something simple like that from being out wide to the backfield. What does that do to a, uh, a quarterback? What does it show him? So – it's going to show him whether it's man or it's zone because if Lorenzo Alexander follows him in, which he does, he's now identifying the coverage easier, which if you're a rookie, what's the one thing you want to do as a rookie? You want to make things simpler. You want to have your keys sort of jump out at you while you're in it real time. This is how you do it. Yes, and you're right, and I like this play. This is something that Dable brought over, and you're going to see shady motion to the backfield, but then he immediately they snap the ball, and he's going to run – over here. Okay, so now let's look to that side of the field, guys. Let's look to that side of the field. How many guys do they have? You got One, two hats. Two, three, and then you got three receivers. Well, guess what that's called? That's a hat on a hat. Yep. And that's, a, that's one of your best players in space with a hat on a hat. And hold on, kudos to who? Josh Allen here, right? This is a throw he rarely made successfully on film in college. It really struggled with this throw. He, he lay, lofted it over Shaq Lawson's head perfectly on this play. More so, I was more impressed that he led LaShawn McCoy, and LaShawn does LaShawn things at the end of this play and ends up just smoking the entire defense. But it just goes to show you that there are subtle things that Josh Allen, I think in his head, is starting to work out and, and started to figure out that he needs to maintain perfect lower body mechanics to complete balls like this. He doesn't need perfect body mechanics to hit a 70-yard ball downfield or throw on the run or hit a deep in route or a seam route. He needs perfect mechanics when perfect mechanics are required, and that is the screen game, the, the slip screen game, and this part of his game right here, which is a much more difficult throw than people are really willing to give this throw credit for. Yeah, and, and he has to process this defensive end because Shaq read it, man. Shaq read it really perfectly. well. Perfectly. And then, you, as you said, Allen let him upfield. And the other thing I, wanna, I want you guys to take a look at, it's second down right now. You look at the chain right here, it's second down, and they have – a long ways to go. You see, that's probably about a 10 yard. So I don't know what, I can't remember what happened on first down because this is not going to go in order. This film's not going to go in order, but uh, this is a second and 10 play. So this is a big play. And to get mm -hmm. an explosive play, to get a hat on a hat, to get your best player, uh, you know, off to the, the races like this, this is uh, good schematics. This is good execution by the offense coordinator. Absolutely. But you mentioned it. It's, it's the scheme. It's the schematics of that play. Um, and that's not the only screen or, I guess, bubble or, or out to your, to your running back that I saw today that impressed me. The disguising yeah. that Brian Dable is employing really to me, and, and I, I talked a little bit about this uh, on Sports Talk Saturday today, that what I think I'm most excited about is I think you're foolish to think that by the Bills trading Tyrod Taylor and bringing in A.J. McCarron and Josh Allen that they got better today in the quarterback room. They didn't. They took a step back in the quarterback room, but what they took a step forward in is scheme. And I think those two things whitewash each other. I think that this offense can be very similar uh, as it was last year, except in terms of yardage and analytics. But I think what I think they'll bring more of is that big play potential because they have a quarterback right now in Josh Allen, who's on the field here, who's willing to take the risks. Yeah, and we saw a couple of those, and some worked out in his favor today, and some didn't. And uh, with this clip, this is the only clip I, I brought over from uh, the prior couple of days of practice, but I, I wanted to show fans I, something I had broken down on Twitter because uh, it's something that's been talked about uh, the first few days, and that's putting Kelvin Benjamin in the slot, right? I mean, we, we, we saw it today. We saw it the last few days, and I love this for so many reasons. But, Nate, I want to hear your opinion about putting him in the slot. So I've sort of – compared a little bit. Um, I think in the league, if you look at Rob Gronkowski, the one guy that is maybe the most like or both sort of the same skill sets as Rob Gronkowski is Kelvin Benjamin. He's got that size, he's got that thickness, and he's also got the athleticism. On this, I, I think what this is right here is you're utilizing Josh Allen's most, I would say, safe and, and maybe the most established part of his passing game the seam route over the middle. Other than that, you know, you've got like the, the double post concept that I think Josh Allen throws really well. Other than that, his seam route is very effective. How do you scheme Kelvin Benjamin open? Because that to me was a, a bad thing that Rick Dennison wasn't really able to do. He wasn't able to scheme his, his man wide receivers who struggle against a man open. Brian Dable's doing that by doing this right here. And that's keeping Kelvin Benjamin 
on a on a slot corner, like or or a safety, and that yeah. is a mismatch all day long. I like putting him in the slot, especially in these three, you know, three wide sets, three by one sets, uh, because he has the size of a, a tight end. You know, he has a size, and then the routes that he does run well, those digs, those ends, um, you know, those basketball routes over the middle of the field. That this is where they can use him in that quasi tight end role. I mean, um, that's what is big around the league now. So if we have Charles Clay and Benjamin inside the middle of the field. I mean, honestly, when you think about what Dennison did last year, the fact that he didn't do this in you know last year is kind of embarrassing because he's he, that's that's what he does. He runs those tight end routes well, and a lot of people outside of Buffalo they they knock on Benjamin saying he is a tight end. Well, whatever, embrace it. What does he do well? This sure. is what he does well. We're gonna put him in a slot. But on this play, it's not that he's the one getting open. What I love about this play here is the fact that he is used as a shield. Okay, so you're gonna see Charles Clay right here. All right, in the slot, and we're going to see him motion back and forth. And of course, uh, this is one thing that happens pretty much every play, right, Nate? Motion, yep. some kind of motion, some kind of movement, because it show it shows you what coverage they're in. And you see Hyde follow him. What is that? That's man coverage. It's man coverage. Hyde. Yep. You know. And so where the play starts is Clay stacked now on Calvin Benjamin. And so with this press defender here, there's going to be some kind of disruption right yep. off the snap. All right, but you see. The release by Benjamin's inside, the stems inside. So he's going to get gains right here. He's going to get him the turn, man turn right into him. But what does Hyde have to do working over the top? He has to somehow work to the middle of the field too, because that's the stem that Charles Clay's taking over the middle of the field, right, Nate? So once he sort of crosses, and, and in this case, he doesn't end up, if he was coming across on that route, once he crosses that middle linebacker's face, he probably becomes open and he becomes an extremely difficult person to cover if you're Micah Hyde because you're essentially trailing him the whole time. All that it really takes in this situation is a good throw that leads him. He pivots this though. And you see them practicing this a ton. I noticed during um, during like one-on-ones and during seven-on-sevens that Brian Dable is super vocal about this particular route. He wants this done with precision. He wants to put every day. Yes. Every day, this Every route, day. he is extremely vocal about this route. This, to me, is probably the most important route in this offense um, from what I saw today. And what this does, as you mentioned it, is him rubbing up inside and taking that inside stem, it forces Micah Hyde to take a bad angle. He has to. And look right now, Micah Hyde is completely irrelevant to this play. Josh Allen could could loft this ball to, to Charles Clay once he gets that pivot put back. And he's got a blocker upfield. You just highlighted in there. He's got a blocker upfield to make a play upfield. So not only and, – and what you're going to notice too is I think what we're going to talk a lot about is how Brian Dable is scheming his his lack of speed and athleticism at the wide receiver position open and what that's going to mean for this team and what that's going to mean for the playmakers on this team. But more importantly, I think you see it. And honestly, I, I'm sure we'll have the play, but the touchdown to Kalen Clay from Josh Allen – is sort of a similar concept to this where you get a rub and you get a stemming. It's it's essentially a, it's a legal pick play is what it is. That's what the Patriots are known for. I mean, they made it famous. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And and I love that you mentioned how he's scheming up these man coverage concepts because, uh, you know, we saw a lot of man coverage last year, which was surprising when you have a mobile quarterback like Tyrod mm -hmm. Taylor. Now, it'll be interesting to see how teams defend us uh, this year with, uh, you know, any of these three quarterbacks, because I know there's some athleticism to each of the quarterbacks, but they're not Tyrod Taylor. And so how defenses scheme up against us uh, this coming year is going to be interesting to see. But I thought uh, the last couple of days, the Bills defense particularly have played a lot of man coverage. And so it was nice to see uh, Dable scheme up plays like this where you're, you're just going to be able to beat man coverage and just little details like the stem of KB's route there. Just that little stem inside is going to turn that corner. He's not looking at the ball at all, obviously. Then Hyde has to work over the top of that, thinking Clay's coming across the middle. But, you know, and you have even Edmonds just sitting here. He, if if uh, Clay comes across the middle, Edmonds probably picks him up. But, you know, he just has such a good route here and to avoid on the defense against a man coverage. A really nice play call from Brian Dable. And it's just something you're going to see so often uh, from him. And that pivot route, Nate, you're right. Every single day he has – worked on that pivot route with every single receiver, every single tight end. That is the route so far in the first three days of camp. And something we saw today, which I really like, um, it's something that, you know, we've talked about a lot. It's, um, you know, calling two plays in a huddle. If you watch the athletic mm -hmm. breakdown I did with Eric Wood, it's something that every team does. Every team has uh, plays where they'll have a check with me or two calls in the huddle. And this was just a play I thought was it was really simple. 
Um, it was just an outside zone paired with a, a bubble, and it's an RPO. And uh, what McCarron's doing, he's just reading the box. If there's a certain amount of guys in the box, he's just going to swing it out here to the wide receiver that's running the bubble. And you'll see it. Just, okay, boom. It's out there. It's quick. And guess what? Give me five yards. I mean, that's just little things like that. I love, man. And you see the the run that's called out here with, I think that's Ivory in the backfield. So he just, the offensive line and the running back are running outside zone, but AJ knows he's just going to fire it out wide to this. I think it's Brandon Riley out wide and on that bubble route. Yep. Yeah. And I, this play sort of epitomizes what Bills fans have been just begging for, for years. It's, Look, you have an off player. You have a player. I mean, if you if you highlight that player, I don't know who that is. Sierra Neal, maybe it, it's someone. It doesn't really matter who it is. But if you look at the line of scrimmage, your wide receiver is two steps back off the line of scrimmage, and that guy's what four yards off the line of scrimmage. So you, right there, you've generated um, you've generated that space, that that area to work with. And all you need is a guy who it doesn't matter who's out there. Uh, Foster, Cam yeah. Phillips, or really it doesn't matter who's out there because if the ball is thrown correctly, it's five yards in a cloud of dust. It's essentially an extension of extension a run. Of you mentioned run. Yep. it really is. No, you nailed it. And that's that's just a little thing. And I know the, act, the pass isn't quite accurate, but it's still five yards on an easy – that's a gimme play. You know, they got numbers to the outside. This uh, DB that's coming down late, as you mentioned, I'm not sure who it is, but he's coming down late. There's no way – he's outflanked. There's no way he can get there. And so, I mean, that's just a hat on a hat outside again, and that's a numbers game, and that's a free five yards from, you know, from an offense. And, and you see AJ, he's pumped up there a little bit. That's a good that's a good call. Give me two plays in the huddle. Let me run the play. That, that's a really good uh, scheme right there. And uh, uh, this is a play. I, I don't know if, when you, if you remember this. It's just a little play action pass from uh, uh, Josh Allen to clear over the middle. A little inaccurate, but this just reminded me of, you know the Chan Gailey, and of course the Patriots. Look, you'll see the you'll see the center or the left guard pull here. I mean that's run action. I, yep. Look at the linebackers. Look at our Tremaine Edmonds and, and and Matt Milano. These are guys that are supposed to be in that second level area. Well, that play action fake, that pull by the guard. They think it's you know the ball's coming downhill, and really it leaves Clay wide open over the middle. You're right, a little inaccurate, but this is actually the first play of the second portion of this is the final portion of team. Um, and, and I remember it specifically because, yes, it was a little behind him. But what I loved about their pulling the guard there is it gives Josh Allen an extra second because a lot of times on these play actions on the blind side, that's where a quarterback gets killed. Like a lot of times he, he's his head's down and when he makes the fake and he comes back up to then throw. I mean, if the, he didn't have that puller, he's probably got a guy right in his face. Yeah. So, uh, like, the thing that I look at in this play is obviously Charles Clay's wide open, and he does need to do a better job of leading him. But these are the sorts of plays, and, and even the, the play prior, where you just see a level of understanding that you just didn't get last year with Rick Dennison. It just seemed like last year they let what the defense do, whatever they were doing to them, they that dictated how they called plays. I just don't get the sense that from Brian Dable, he wants to dictate what the He's defense dictating, is. No and, doubt about and it. And that is such a refreshing thing. And you see it. Uh, listen, this is the number one defense. You got all basically, other than Trent Murphy, you've got all the starters out there right now. Yeah. So uh, that tells you that they're going out there against the number one defense and they're bringing it to them. And I love that. Yeah, and, and one thing I do want to know, when you got that guard pulling, it's dangerous because then on the backside, you're going to have – You worry Dawkins. about Jerry Hughes. Yeah, yep. Dawkins is hinging inside, and then he's hinging. He's supposed to you know try to get a piece of Jerry. But but look at the play fake, the ball handling skills. One thing I really liked about Allen coming out was his ball handling skills. And watch what that fake does to Jerry Hughes. He goes right at the running back. He doesn't even yep. know that Josh Allen has the ball right, right in front of him. And Allen, you watch to the very end of the clip, he – he stands tall in the pocket and what he takes a he takes a hit here. He could take a hit if they're actually hitting the quarterback. He probably would have got hit. But you know the back the ball is on the back hip a little bit. That's fine. But I mean Clay should catch this and still stand his feet. But nonetheless, I like the play calling. Uh, again, I thought it was reminiscent of the Chan Gailey years and uh, obviously the Patriots scheme uh, the last you know decade or so. Yeah, and I think the 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 the, the theme that we're going to continue seeing here is talking about the scheme. Um, and, and I think that is maybe more important than anything that any success that Josh Allen or any of these quarterbacks are going to have. It's really going to stem from how can he can Brian Dable make it easier for these guys. And we talked about the motioning and, and, and creating a more uh, an easier arena for you to figure out what the defense is throwing at you and, and little things like that pre pre snap motions and um, the pivot routes, the the stemming, the 
the, the placement of wide receivers and tight ends and things like that, or having multiple tight ends on the field, which I saw a ton. I saw a ton of Logan Thomas on the field at the same time with Kelvin Benjamin and Charles Clay. Like no one's really afraid that you're going to outrun them, but right. that's a lot of size on the field for a quarterback who will likely be willing to throw into contested spots. I, give me those three and a contested ball over a, just about any defender in the league. No, definitely. And uh, we're going to move on to uh, it's, this is during, uh, you know, a matchup period where the receivers play against the DBs. Is this, is this the Ray Ray McLeod play? This is the Ray Ray McLeod play. So I want to set it up by by showing you guys how many are, are actually defenders are in the screen. So you got one here, two, three, four, and then five. And then you're going to have one over here. So you have about six guys that are dropping down to within what five to seven yards versus a, an empty set. Again, we talked how much they actually worked out of empty. It was probably the most I've seen in the first few days. And what you're going to have McLeod do here is just uh, he's going to widen out here, and then he's just going to come back, bend it back down the seam. Uh, so with how this many defenders within the line, you know, first five to seven yards of line of scrimmage, it's basically a cover one or or a, a single high look. So and when the ball snapped, you can watch the the corner over here. He's just in a bail technique. Um, and he's going to drop what it looks like to be basically cover three. Uh, but I want you to keep an eye on McLeod here. He's going to get disrupted, but then he's going to he's going to work down the seam. So he's going to clear that defender, and then Allen just look where his eyes are. Nate, is yeah. he looking at is he looking at McLeod? No, he's looking straight up the field. And and that's another thing I noticed when I was off with the quarterbacks that Dable took all three quarterbacks. And what they did is they did a drill and, and everyone else is doing contact drills. And, you know, the quarterbacks are divas. They don't do any of those contact drills. They go to the side and they, they seem like they're doing nothing. They're just kind of like throwing the ball to each other. They're taking drops and Dable is telling them every time that they don't look into his eyes while they're taking their drops. And I love that. He's yeah. telling them, look me in the eye, look me in the eye. Now look, now look. And, and he's working those little things. And so far, I've noticed that Josh Allen, I haven't seen him stare down really anybody um, all day yet today. I didn't see him stare down anybody of what he is doing other than the Kalen Clay touchdown. But I, when we get to that, that was a scheme to play. Like that was your primary target on that play. So, uh, but on this play specifically, where he throws this football is right off the helmet of the defender. And it, it's exactly how the throw is coached. Oh, and the trajectory, man. You talk about the trajectory Perfect. of this throw. Perfect. So obviously it has to have velocity because – uh, as I mentioned, you're going to have that corner dropping into what appears to be a deep third. He's sitting right here, right? So typically when you're dropping, if this is cover three as it looks, uh, that guy is supposed to split the two verticals. So he's supposed to split, uh, I think this is Clay here, and then you're going to have obviously Ray Ray McLeod here working towards the middle. Well, he doesn't quite do that, but look at the trajectory of this pass, and I'll try to stop it right where you can see it, but it's, uh, it's right here. All right, so here's Stanford. Look at him get up. No shot. No shot, and it's on a line, and here's McLeod. Here's that corner that's going to try to break on it. Obviously, the safety is not on the screen. I mean, that placement, look at that. I mean, McLeod get, snags it with his hands. If he doesn't snag that too with his good hands catch, what happens? It might be intercepted. It might be intercepted, and here's the thing, and, and I, it, it's inadvertent, but Raven McLeod's going to take a shot in a real game right here. Probably, yes. But you know what? He's protected the throw – protected him from taking a, 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 a like a chin shot here yeah. like though at worst he's going to take a hit on his back shoulder and the back part of his shoulder or low and that's a hit he's going to get up from but if you lead that ball into that cornerback where he can collide with him or he could chin him like that's a play where that guy's getting carted off the field so what i liked about it is not only the accuracy of the throw but where he led him on that part of the field yeah it was it was a really nice play man and i'm, I'm Honestly, I was when he he was dealing that play. I, I was I was blown away honestly because uh, I was not expecting that from him uh, on that play. It was a really nice play down the seam, and um, I had mentioned I, I listened to you and Sale on the way home, and and Sale had been impressed with uh, these seam routes that Allen has thrown. Which mm -hmm. when you watch some of his film in college, it wasn't really his best throw. He he tend to overthrow a little bit uh, in college when he threw down the seam, but that one I liked. Um, the throw, especially when you're talking to a smaller receiver, I mean that's mm -hmm. that's a tough throw. That yeah, with the trajectory, with the with the the ball speed that needs to be on that, and the location. I mean, I, I give him a plus on that. Absolutely, hundred percent. And this is another play too. I I know the exact play on this one too, where I just this this kind of play right here, and this is going to show you. This is the interception, correct? 
No, no, this is actually a spacing concept. So what's oh, going to okay. happen? So, I thought okay. this was the next play. No, that, that, we're going to get to that. But you're going to see uh, Taiwan Jones motion to the backfield, and uh, it, it just appears like they're in zone coverage, right? There's not a linebacker out there with Taiwan Jones, so they're motioning him to the backfield. It makes it nice and easy for Allen. So now we got a trips set over here to the field. So, right? we got three guys right here, and all they're going to be doing is just running some curls, and they're going to run a curl in the middle of the field with Kroll. You're going to have a flat route by this number three uh, tight end. I believe it is. Uh, I can't remember his name, but he's running a flat route. But here's McLeod right here, and I just want you to watch him because he's just going to work up field. He's going to run a little you know, hitch, and look where look, look where Allen's eyes are. Yeah, right into the center of the field. And, and not only that, I just love – he's a big guy. He stands tall in the pocket. He can see everything that's happening on the field. I love that. Uh, like that. That's one of my favorite parts about him is how tall he stands in the pocket. Like I, how many times, I mean, I know how many times I've been told that when I'm going back from my coach, stand tall in the pocket, stand tall. Like it's something that a lot of times can't really be coached. Like you just have to physically be able to do it. And like, not only that, he just seems so comfortable, which is not what I was sort of expecting at this point. Yeah. And this is, I mean, um, if, uh, if this was man coverage, he probably works the other side of the field with a little curl and then a wheel. Um, that's something he did so much, uh, at Alabama last year. It was one of his primary plays that made it really easy for Jalen hurts. And if you remember the national championship game, Roquan, uh, Roquan lit up Bo Scarborough, uh, on the sideline on this very same concept to the backside. So again, you have his own concept to one side of the field and you have probably a man beater to the other side of the field. Mm -hmm. So again, very good schematics, very good execution by the rookie quarterback. No question. And he delivers an accurate ball there. I mean, it was a little high. Obviously, it wasn't right in the chest. But I, I, I told this to Sal when we were on today. I, if you notice, compared to like when Nathan Peterman or A.J. McCarron's throwing, compared to when Josh Allen's throwing, none of these receivers let Josh Allen's throws get to their chest because it would literally take the it would take the breath out of them. Like it really would have. <laughs> like would. when they, they they let Nathan Peterman's ball hit their chest. Like I see a lot of guys catching like this when 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 it's Josh Allen throwing, they're like Yeah, they're trying to yeah. stay away from that because he <laughs> throws the football, man. No, you're right, man. And this is another I just it's just really nice job of the rookie going through progression. And again, you know, maybe this isn't the first team he's playing against, but I don't care. I want him to. You want to see the progress. You want to see those progressions. Yeah, right. just do the little things on what it takes to be a quarterback. All right. And so this is, he's trying to work the far side of the field here. It's a, a three by one set. And you'll see just a little post wheel uh, by the first two receivers to the top, uh, top of the screen. So a little post wheel and he's reading high to low. What he wants to do, this is something they've been doing a lot of. They want to hit this down the sideline. They want to get that explosive. But guess what? That guy played him over the top perfectly. So that's taken away. So he moves on in his progression. And you see him work through it. So he's working high to low. He's working left to right uh, on the screen. And so these two uh, these two receivers right here, they're, they're eliminated. Those two mm -hmm. guys right there are eliminated. Okay, so his third option right here is coming right into his plane of view. Well, that guy's covered too by Stanford. Mm -hmm. Well, the third, the fourth guy in this option is this tight end that releases right here. But I want you to watch what he does. All right. So what he's going to do, he's going to work to the middle of the field. He's going to go off the screen, but then he's going to pivot back this way, right into the Josh Allen's line, uh, the void and the line of view. You think about it. So basically, uh, Dable here has given Josh Allen four options, all almost on one side of the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this. Boom. Beautiful pass. Look at that. Put it right on him. Beautiful scheme. Beautiful pass. It, it, and again, I, I keep kind of going back to the Brian Dable effect. I know we're trying to, you know, break down Josh Allen here, but <laughs> I, I just, I think like so much of Josh Allen's potential success is going to be tied in with what Brian Dable can do for him. It, it, it really is like, and, and I can't really emphasize that enough. Yeah. And you know, when I first saw this play to me, this is something you see in those air raid offenses. This is an air raid play. Uh, there's a ton of options, and you're working them a lot. There, I mean, this is okay. You know, we always talked about Tyrod Taylor and being, you know, kind of a half the field, you know, quarterback. Well, this is the scheme making Allen be a, a, a half the field quarterback, but in a way that can get guys open, in a way that makes him, it easy for him to work through progressions. So, I mean, and this guy's not even, and I'll say this guy's not even open. This guy's right. Not that's. Open. That's a nice throw. And uh, we talk about all the time the kind of throws Tyrod Taylor makes and doesn't make. That's a throw that he does not make because he's not open. Just just plainly put, he's not open. 
But like the thing that too, when you go back a few plays to, uh, you don't have to go back, but I, I just mean thinking back to a few plays to that AJ McCarron uh, RPO play from under center. Mm -hmm. Like those are the sorts of plays that you look at and you say like, Brandon Bean mentioned this when he was talking on Chopin Bulldog the other day about um, Patrick Mahomes and these air raid these air raid quarterbacks and these air raid offenses. They walk off the bus and they're six to seven for a hundred yards sure. or six to seven for eighty yards. Like Josh Allen wasn't getting that, and I think what you're going to see a little bit. I think you're going to see air raid concepts in Brian Dable's scheme because they want to put the confidence. I think if 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 Josh Allen can start a game three or four, four or five for 30 yards, but he gets those completions under his belt. Like those are the sorts of things that help you build throughout a full football game. No, I'm glad you mentioned that because, uh, you know, on the first day of practice, I, I hammered Josh Allen and, and I admitted he had four or five good plays that day. But to me, his mental toughness lacked that day. I did not see that on film with him a lot, but I saw it that day. And uh, when he started missing passes, the body language. Very yep. frustrated. His body language was horrible. Your teammates see that on your first day of practice. They're trying to pick him up. The coach mm -hmm. is trying to pick him up. I didn't like that. I thought that was a bad first impression for uh, a quarterback of you know that was drafted, uh, you know, top top ten. And you know, so I, I that I dinged him for because I I want my quarterback be, to be ment more mentally tough than that, especially on your first day. Like I understand jitters, but. Um, but I'll, I'll admit he has progressed the first few days when it comes to that. And, uh, you had mentioned about, you know, trying to get some easy stuff for him early to me, he's like a basketball player. He's very streaky. You saw yeah. that confidence today, man. When he was, like I said, when he was, uh, you know, dealing it down the seam there on that play to McLeod, when he started hitting those passes, guess what? You felt his confidence. You felt his teammates start watching him as you mentioned before. And it, it was, uh, it, it definitely picked up this crowd. I mean, everyone's watching this guy. And he became really hot in this practice. And yes, I know he threw two interceptions, and we're going to get to that. But that wasn't all on him. Uh, but he gained confidence uh, throughout this practice, and it was it was nice to see, especially again from seeing him from day one to day three. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of what you need to see. And here's the yes um, the interception that that I do believe was on him. He just didn't get the ball out for further enough uh, or as far as he needed to. And this was immediately following two really, really good throws. One, the, the touchdown to Kalen Clay up, up the left sideline. But maybe a more impressive throw was the back shoulder throw to Cam Phillips right in front of me. It was, I was like, I We're think gonna get to that. We're going like, to get to that. That, that <laughs> play, and this, this, is, this is the next play after that. So, yeah. but I, I just think like following up those two plays with a play like this is sort of what you're going to start to see from a rookie quarterback because he gains that confidence and he makes a throw he maybe shouldn't have made. Yeah, no doubt about it. And when we actually break down the play here, you're going to see why it was a bad decision. Okay, so we want to start off with that movement, right? You got Murphy coming to the backfield. Uh, the Bills uh, obviously are in a, a three-by-one set uh, out here to the field. But I also want you to watch. When you guys are watching practice, and I told you guys, you know, keep an eye on uh, the individual periods, what they're working on, what the coaches are telling them. Well, guess what? During these those periods when they're di even doing walkthroughs, Nate, and th these team periods, well, you need to pay attention to are these down distances because right now it's third down. So you got to keep that in mind. See third down and here's the first down marker. All right. So this is a third down play. So it's a big play. You know, these are the type of plays when you're trying to grade and evaluate him. These mm -hmm. are the ones you need to pay attention to. And he made a mistake here because um, we'll start off with the motion of the running back, but you're also going to see Ray, Ray McLeod right here, motion to the middle of the field and, and basically set up in a bunch set. And after, you saw the motion from the running back. You saw this motion here. It's it's apparent that they're in man coverage, right, Nate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. absolutely. And, and again, that's making it obvious for your for your young quarterback, which again is is all going to be scheme related. Yes, and this is a simple concept. It's one that we ran a ton of last year. So what you're going to see here from the bunch set is you're going to just have a little flat route here. You're going to have Ray Ray McLeod just running a, a little a little curl right here, and I believe this was Pro, the intended target. He's just running to the corner of the end zone. He's running the flag route to mm -hmm. the corner. So you got a little snag spot route here. It's a I very thought, common concept. I thought he threw it pretty flat. I thought I thought he he threw the the route to Pro a little flat, and that's why you're going to see the pick. Yes, and, and I want to start off with, I thought that given the down and distance, I thought, thought he got greedy. I thought his confidence was really high, which is okay. You know, get that out now. But if you watch uh, McLeod right here, he's wide open. And does he get the first down? Who knows? But guess what? He'd be catching the ball right there. The defender, you'll see he's probably at least five yards off because he's got to work through all this traffic here. Yep. All right, so he's going to sit. McLeod's going to sit right there. If the ball's on him right now, I mean, look at the middle of the That's field, a bro. 
Yeah. yeah, and that's Ray Ray McLeod. All you got to do is give him a little bit of a jolt to the inside of the field. He might be gone, yeah. uh, but more than likely. Like that's the kind of play you you want. To, but again, this is the sort of play in understanding that you'd rather take a two yard and maybe have the opportunity to lead your receiver to the first down rather than trying to go for a touchdown here on this play or, or taking too much rather he needs to be able to and this is all stuff that that all rookies deal with it's not okay. just josh allen it's it's taking what the defense gives you and that is something that's acquired much like you know when you're a kid you don't like to taste a beer until you're 21 right no definitely and you know we talked some about some of the bad and he gets a little greedy here but i'll i'll, I'll you know lead it into the bad with this too because okay the bills they're showing a double a gap blitz right here i mean they're bringing everybody and if you watch the play uh you're gonna see the vertical sets by the two tackles here you're gonna see vertical sets and you're gonna see a pocket develop right up the middle right here and he just steps up slight movement and guess what nate you nailed it he's standing tall in the pocket man that's they're sending pressure and you see the middle of the fields it's vacant there's no one there that means everyone's coming at josh allen and he's standing tall he's looking down the field i mean this is just i i like that part of this play he is unfazed by that pressure that's coming. He's trusting his offensive line, and he's looking down the field. Now, on the back end, you'll see it. You, you, as you mentioned, he throws it a little flat here. You see Ryan Carter. He's sitting right, pretty much right at the goal line where Prohl is you know, kind of about to float into the end zone here. He threw it like an out route and not a corner route. Yeah. It's really it's how I saw the play. And the other thing, too, is one of the biggest criticisms that I've seen uh, amongst national people when they try to – when they're criticizing Josh Allen is that on film, he didn't really show a willingness to stay in the pocket and make throws when um, that he left it too soon without really allowing a pocket yeah. to establish it. In this case, this is this other than the throw and other than the decision, if he threw this to, to Ray Ray McLeod, I would have to think of Brian Dables using this play, this, this play right here on film. And they're watching it over and over again about this is how you execute in the NFL, you yeah. step up in the pocket and you make a throw, an easy throw. It, it, he he chose the more difficult throw. He needs to choose the easy throw. Other than that, honestly, he gets an A other than the interception. No, I, I, I agree with you, man, because, I mean, he's trusting Murphy so much right here. He's picking up that A-gap blitz from a linebacker, and he picks it up really well and just just a little, little hitch in the pocket, and he's standing tall. Man, honestly, when I watched this live, I didn't get to see that, but when I, I re-rolled this tape and watched it, I was pretty impressed with this. And to me, I, honestly, the interception is one thing, and especially given the down distance, but I like his composure and poise in the pocket here. And that's something that if you watch it live, you probably didn't see, but heck of a play by Ryan Carter, man. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give him that too. And look, he gets his feet down. So uh, nice defensive play, uh, but there was some good and bad in that play. And, and I think that's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, that's Josh Allen in a nutshell, but some of the things that you hear from national media and how hard they are on him and his, his criticisms and his weaknesses and how bad he is, it's exaggerated. Let's be honest here. It is, is it exaggerated because, you know, some of the things that he, you know, he can't do, you see him do. I mean, it's just a matter of getting it consistent, getting that uh, type of play from him consistently where he's completing those, you know, those out routes, those flat routes to running backs and screens. I mean, it's stuff that, you know, that he, he's going to have to work on, but, um, here's the other interception. All right. So this one, what would you say about this one, Nate? Would you say this was on him? Oh, uh, and I'm glad Aaron just, just said this in the chat is he was like, this is a throw we didn't see from Tyron after the throw was made and the, and the, it was intercepted by Poyer. I was right. standing next, I was standing next to sale and sale turned back to me and said the exact same thing that, that Aaron just said. He <laughs> yeah, said, Tyron doesn't even make that throw. Doesn't even make that. And, and you know what? In, in the stands, people were saying the same thing. Honestly, they were saying the same thing. And I'm going to set up this play again um, by saying, uh, you know, they're in a three one three by one set, and they have the running back next to Allen, and they simply motion him out wide. All right, and they got a tight alignment by Benjamin here, expecting that running back to obviously align outside of him. But that little movement by the running back tells what? Okay, here comes linebacker going with that running back. So they're in, man, they're in man coverage and. Uh, one of the biggest trends, and that's one thing I've, I've liked about Dable, and I've said it on Twitter, um, he is Dable is bringing things that are trendy around the league. A trendy around a lot around the league. You'll see it on the Kalen Clay uh, play um, touchdown that he sifts the tight end across the formation. You'll see this here. It's a slot fade. This is one of the biggest plays in college football right now. You have a slot fade, so you're motioning out this running back out here wide, right? And then you're getting obviously man coverage. That means Vontae Davis is on man coverage versus uh, Calvin Benjamin. And he does have good leverage on Calvin Benjamin here. He's playing outside leverage, and he has a good job of 
having his eyes to the quarterback. So it's really, it's a really tough throw to make, but guess what? He makes it. He gives this guy a shot and it's really easy. I mean, discipline again with the eyes, right? Nate gets to the top mm -hmm. of his drop eyes are on the, on the, on the safety and then boom, that safety, that single high safety has to work all the way across the field to Benjamin. But it's a pretty good throw when you say it's a great. I think it's a great throw. I was on the other sideline. You were you had the the rear view from the other side. It was a I thought a really perfectly placed ball. And what this play shows is a trust uh, in Calvin Benjamin. It's an understanding of who is covering Calvin Benjamin. It's Tre'Davious White. It's the best cornerback on the team. He's Vontae simply, Vontae Davis. Yes. Oh, it's Vontae. Oh, okay. Yeah. Either way. Uh, he simply doesn't have the size to match up with Calvin Benjamin. It, to be honest with you, Aaron talks about a 50-50 ball. This is really more like a 70-30 ball. Like, and that's what you have with, with, with Calvin Benjamin is that number, that 50-50 idea, it's not, it's contested. But he has the advantage, a significant one over most corners in this league. So especially when you're talking about him coming from the slot. So I thought that the ball was well-placed. Um, I thought Calvin should come down with it. He tipped it up twice. Yeah, uh, he tipped it with his left hand first, tipped it to himself, and you'll see it right here. He's tipping it with his right hand, but that that right there is where the ball catapults up right into Poyer's hands right here. Yeah, absolutely. But this play, um, it, it really what it to me shows is already an understanding of matchups, but more so is having that trust factor, and that's the one thing that I'm going to be excited to watch Josh Allen is there is no question that Josh Allen is willing to make just about any throw on the field. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and it's something that you talked about last year with, the, you know, the back shoulder throws and just these 50-50 balls. They're not throws that Tyrod would make. And, and you know, that's too bad. And this is uh, the, the Kalen Clay uh, touchdown here. And so uh, we'll set it up. It's just a, it's a simple curl wheel concept to the top of the screen. And what I like here is, and I, I, I question this play, Nate, because honestly, to me, this almost looks like an RPO. Um, mm -hmm. And you can see Josh Allen takes a long time to let, to, to run the play here. And it looks like he's trying to tell the tackle right here, almost like sell the run, but just, just watch, just watch the sets by the offensive lineman. It looks like it's almost like an RPO. Uh, once the ball snapped here, I mean, I, I can't confirm it, but it looks like it, but anyways, what you're going to have this tight end to the near side of the field. You're going to have this tight end sift across the formation. You're going to have this, uh, running back, just running a little inside, uh, it looks like inside zone, track here and of course that right there is going to create issues for not only uh the linebackers here which that gets them downhill but it creates issues with this defensive end who's unblocked because mm -hmm. he's put in a bind all right he sees the light the tight end coming at him he sees the play fake to the running back he wants to naturally come down and and, and stop this run play well you know obviously the ball is not handed off but the block by the tight end and, you know, just that action holds that rush. And that's what's nice about a little simple play like this, Nate, is that it's going to stunt that pass rush just a little bit to give uh, Josh Allen and the offense lineman, for that matter, enough time to, to get the ball downfield. So now we'll go to the routes because you're going to see a nice – it's man coverage, right, Nate? I mean, it looks press mm -hmm. man, eyes on the quarter, or on the, the wide receivers out there, and you're going to see them just a little, a little rub concept, forcing that DB to work either – you know, over the top over here, or he's going to have to undercut it and try to get into the hip pocket of clay. Well, he chooses that. And when you have a guy like clay with that speed, I mean, look at the anticipation too. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, that's really nice anticipation. What I love about the scheme of this, the scheme up of this play is generally speaking, when you have a combination route, like you do here or a concept route, uh, typically this is more of like a, a slant. Um, or something that's drawing that that guy to the middle of the field so that he has to get around him. It's a pivot play. Like this whole offense is going to be based around that route. And you, I think it was you that mentioned it. This is like sort of like right out of the Shanahan textbook. Like like it is one of those plays that is tried and true. And he does such a good job of first of all delivering a really accurate ball, selling the fake but allowing it to develop before he throws it. You know what I'm saying? Like he yeah. could look at this and he could throw it too soon and maybe on a rope. There's a couple ways he could throw this ball, but what I love about him is he waits for it to develop, throws it off his back foot and lays it into the bucket like a beaut. 
Yeah, and like I said, there's so much going on in this play. And again, I can't confirm that it's a run pass option, but when you watch this left tackle and you watch that left guard, they're coming, they're they're coming downhill as if they are run blocking. So again, it's gonna bring those linebackers up. It's gonna bring that those edge rushers, you know, inside so that this tight end can pull the block off. But it just again, you're getting it's like basketball. You're getting one on one on the outside, you're getting speed, uh, you're getting man coverage. I mean, that's just really good schematics on this play. And then the execution by Josh Allen is just beautiful. A great anticipation. Clay's not looking. Clay hasn't even cleared really the little rub route by Cam Phillips. And the ball's delivered with touch, with perfect trajectory for Clay to run up under for the touchdown. Yeah, and this is my favorite play from camp um, from today, but I think it might be the offensive play of the week so far um, of, of what they've really been able to do. And this is these are pro style concepts where a lot of times you know you're talking about whether or not it could be an RPO. Um, I, I just think the movement from the offensive line it sort of confuses me. I don't know either to be honest with you. It, it seems like three. It seems like the left side's doing one thing, and the center's doing yeah. another, and then the right side's doing a third thing. Like it seems like they're all sort of not on the same page there. Um, but that's a pro concept you're seeing there. There are a ton of college concepts sprinkled into this offense, but right there is a pro concept that was run to a T. No doubt about it. And again, I think in it took, I was like, what is Allen doing? Because you saw him for five to 10 seconds trying to get the tackle's attention, trying to relay something to him. Then he looks back, I think, at Dable and tries relaying something. So I don't know if they have some kind of call to make that side sell run versus a, a slide protection to the right side with the, from the center to the right, um, because it just looks different. Um, you know, when you watch it, it, there's so much going on. And again, you're talking about so many different concepts, um, that tight end sift. If you guys go follow Mark Bullock, um, for the Washington post, he does a he has a really good, um, Twitter memory, uh, Twitter moment. I'm sorry. That has uh, a bunch of those sift blocks from that tight end coming across the formation. Definitely check that out. Um, it's just something that is trending around the league. Uh, it makes it really tough on that edge rusher. Uh, something definitely you want to take a look at. But, Nate, I honestly, I'm, I left out the Cam Phillips play, but I want to give that to the viewers, man. So I want to bring that up real quick because, it's, sure. it, you know, in the Slack channel, in our premium Slack channel, uh, where we get a ton of our ideas from all of our uh, subscribers and members, um, they – what we're going to call it, we're going to call the back shoulder pass. We're going to call it the Geary because it's something that you've loved and talked about for the last year and a half, man. I am, I'm taking it and I'm running with it. I love that because I have been begging for a quarterback to just attempt it, just put it in a playbook, let him try it. This is such, and listen, I'm going to tell you, um, at personally, when I, I, I never really utilized this play. Um, I didn't, we didn't throw a lot in high school. We ran a triple option, but when I got to college and I learned how to throw this, it's such a difficult play. It's such a difficult throw. You have to throw it with a ton of confidence, but where you're aiming is at the defender. Like you're aiming the football at the, at the helmet of the defender. And that so can pretty. scare a lot of people off, but this is such a beautiful throw. This is so pretty. And, and I want to, you know, set it up real quick. I don't want to, you know, jam pack uh, the listeners too much and the viewers too much. But again, I, I, I question whether this is an actual RPO. Look at the left guard. Yeah, look at the left guard. I was just going to say And then look the at the point. action yeah. by the, it's a pre-snap RPO. I'm not talking he's reading a defender, uh, reading a conflict defender. This looks like a pre-snap RPO out of a three by one set. You got Cam Phillips to the top of the screen, uh, man up, isolated uh, versus that defensive back. And oh my goodness, I, the throw. I mean, look, he's already releasing it. Watch Cam and Phillips. I'll try to roll it slow. Look at the, the release. Phillips is not looking, not looking. And then, oh, his head's back. And all of a sudden, here comes a ball and he's adjusting perfectly to the back shoulder throw. So we talked about, Eric, and, and I know I've talked about this with you, that the reason, and I wrote this in the article that I wrote earlier in the year, that what's going to make it so difficult to keep Josh Allen off the field and out of the starting lineup is his ability to make throws that other guys can't make. Right here, if you slow-mo the release of this, his body is contorted. and like In no way should that ball be thrown accurately. His belly button is like at the route. Like, I... I, I if I watch this, he's thrown it. Uh, dude, there's so many things wrong with his base on this throw, but he figures out a way to throw it. Look at his feet. Look right. at his feet. They are literally next to it. Like he is standing <laughs> upright facing the middle of the field. He, right now, if, if, if where you're looking, he's throwing it onto the 390. <laughs> like that's 
like if you're looking at you, this still right here, if you were to tell me where this ball goes, I'm saying over there at the rider truck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Dude. Straight up. Like, <laughs> like it's unbelievable that he's able. And now this footwork gets him in trouble in the short game. And this no is doubt. the stuff that he needs to clean up when he is asked to be precise and asked to execute more West Coast type uh, concepts. But this, I'm fine because he can make every throw with his arm downfield in just his arm. So if he's going to throw balls like this with that footwork, I, I guess I'm open to it. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a really nice play. And honestly, it was a play that they've been trying to hit the last couple of days. Uh, yesterday, day two of camp, they tried at least two back shoulder throws with Allen. And what happened yesterday is Kalen Clay was coming down the near sideline, running a go route. And the leverage of the, of the DB was just like this really tight upfield. And there was no throw down the field, but it was an isolation route, and they wanted to, to, to hit that big play. And Allen threw it. He anticipated the throw, but Kalen Clay, he didn't look back for the ball. And as soon as the ball hit the ground, Dable ran over to the receiving group and, and was yelling at them because he was, ex he was expecting that receiver to, to look back shoulder. Yep. Yep. This is in the offense. This is going to be a throw that this offense is going to throw. And much like the pivot, I think it's going to be an integral part to it because – you have to – and listen, Brian Dable is is sort of brought up in the vertical style throwing, um, vertical concepts. Um, and when you talk about vertical and you talk about West Coast, people are like, wow, there's just so much stuff. But like a West Coast is really based off nuanced route running, timing, footwork of the quarterback. This type of offensive vertical style offense or passing game is really going to be relied upon where the football is um, downfield because there's a lot of times in vertical pass sets and, and concepts – that the guy isn't open, and that's sort of the point of it. So, and that's honestly where Josh Allen's going to thrive is is throwing balls that eighty five to ninety percent of the league would have no business trying to throw. Yeah, that was, I mean, a great play. And again, this that's is an Aaron Rodgers throw. This is an Aaron Rodgers throw. And you know, and you talk about why it's going to be part of this offense. It's going to be part of this offense because let's be honest here, there are only a few guys that can separate with speed. You know, and if, if the concept doesn't work, if it's not schemed up properly and maybe they see a different coverage than what they expected, you got to have plays that are uncoverable. And this fade, this back to shoulder uh, throw is a throw that's uncoverable. If it's, if it's um, worked on enough, if there's enough rapport between the quarterback and these receivers, plays like this can happen on a regular. And you saw, and you see that from some of the best in the game. And so it was nice to see uh, Josh Allen connect with Cam Phillips here, guys that he'd been working with a lot in camp. So, uh, little things like that, that rapport that these quarterbacks are getting with their uh, wide receivers, it's nice to see it pay off. And, again, this was during that streaky time when Allen was – he was on fire on this on this drive. Yeah, man. I, I don't know. After today, I left really excited. My thing, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 845, can he string two practices together? Because if he can do that, he looked better – he looked head above heels better than the other two quarterbacks. Nathan Peterman has taken a big slide from the spring where I thought he was a lock to be the starting quarterback week one. I don't see that anymore. I Right now, after today, now Nathan Peterman can turn around and have a good practice tomorrow and change my mind about this, but right now it's a two-man race, and it's between A.J. McCarron and it's between Josh Allen. That can change tomorrow, but that's how I feel today. If Josh Allen can string two, three of these practices together, have a good preseason game, then string one or two more like this, there is absolutely a blueprint for Josh Allen to start, and it is far simpler than I thought it was going to be at this point. Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, from seeing day one to day three, this was, again, he made mistakes. Step. He made mistakes, but they're good learning, you know, coaching points, both. Um, they're, he had some really good throws, and you saw it. He worked through his progressions. Um, uh, yes, some of the inaccuracies are there. But he's working through the progressions, and he you can tell he's picking up the offense slowly but surely. Um, today, again, you saw his confidence. Uh, I've seen him already in the first three days be at his lowest low, and then you see plays today. Even even though he made those mistakes, he was still out there. He still held it, you know, held his head high, and was uh, you know was being being uh, uh, aggressive. And I think that um, when you see some of these plays, and and like that last drive when uh, he was getting streaky, he was you know making a lot of those plays. Um, again, I think there were, there were a lot of RPOs. I can't confirm it. I'm going to look into it a little more and watch it a little more, but I think those were actually pre-snap RPOs, which again, when we're thinking long-term and what Dable's trying to build, what this organization is trying to build, they're trying to find their franchise quarterback. Well, 
these are plays, these RPO plays, um, especially the ones that are trying to read a linebacker or read safeties, because those are in this playbook. We saw it early on the first couple of days. They're reading safeties, whether you know they rotate from a two high to a single high set. Um, those are aggressive plays. They're trying to push the plays downfield. They're trying to be aggressive because they know they're gonna they're gonna run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. But when they have the threat of Shady and they put the ball in his belly and it's an RPO and they're reading the safety, well, guess what? That's where those explosive plays come on the outside. And and that's just trying to, you know, Dable trying to get his guys in space. Those That's trying to put his quarterbacks in the best position to get those explosive plays because guess what? The efficiency of those explosive plays are actually going to probably be the determining factor of how good this offense is because they they need to steal plays. They need to be a, a toxic offense in a, in a good way. They need those explosive, aggressive plays. Absolutely. All right, well, we're at the hour mark. we got to cut it. We've got one more shirt to give away, yeah. and the next person that signs up for premium content that is – Oh, we got a different one here. Oh, snap. All right, well, the next person that is in this chat – um, or that's watching this podcast doesn't have to be right now that signs up for the premium membership and shoots Eric an, e- uh, an email or a message and lets him know that he saw this on the podcast today that they're signing up for the premium. You'll get the t-shirt. So sign up for the premium. It's cheap. It's great. And you get to interact with us on the Slack channel, which is pretty cool. Yeah, man. You know, this was fun. I was so excited driving the whole way home, man. I was Dude, texting, you're, I was texting you're, Nate, listening to you. I was going nuts, man. It was awesome. <laughs> Eric said, I was in the middle of my show and Eric's texting me, yo, make sure you do, say this. And yo, how about this one play during practice? And I'm like, bro, aren't you driving? Yeah, no, I was for the first half. And then my phone was just blowing up and I, and I was getting the, you know, the video look, look at the video. And I'm like, wow, this was way more impressive than I thought. And again, we talk about Allen and those interceptions, but when I, you watch it closely, it was it was more impressive than I even thought with the naked eye at, at training camp. So um, Eric had I'm, a pull I'm, over at a rest stop. He's like, Victoria, <laughs> get in the driver's seat. I got work to do. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I was like, oh, well, guess what? It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, man. But, uh, so, everyone, thanks for joining us, everyone. Definitely. And uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna try to do this the next couple of days with camp, obviously leading into uh, preseason. But uh, man, Nate, good job, man, hosting today, brother. Yeah, I'll have my weekend breakdown sometime tomorrow evening, probably coming out on Monday. Um, So you'll want to keep an eye out for that. Obviously, we keep pumping out content at an unbelievable rate. So if you don't have the app, download it so that you know when all this stuff's coming out. Otherwise, for me, Nate Geary, Eric Turner, another episode of Cover One Buffalo. We out.